Ladies and gentlemen, episode three of Drop Room, and this is the first time I'm doing the intro. Three episodes in, it took me this long, but that's because I got a new boy. A new boy in town is coming with me. I am Balti Baby, but I've got Darth Mike right Hello, here. Hello, everybody. What How's is going on? Uh, you know, I just got off a boat about two days ago, got back to the country yesterday, and I'm uh, excited to hear about all the shenanigans I missed in the world of Counter-Strike. Bro, there is a lot of shenanigans, I'll tell you that, especially in the MDL. There are shenanigans a, a lot. Some some word that you say after shenanigans. Many so, shenanigans, the plur, abundant, abundant yes. shenanigans. I'm trying exactly. to reach in here. There, there you go. Thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate the help. I, I needed it there. But I'm assuming that we're going to have to do a little bit of an interview. You're the new boy, so i got to ask you some questions. i gotta, I got to ring you in. To there we go. Your, so first off, your name is Darf Bike. That's true. D A R F M I K E. Not Dwarf Mike, not Darth Mike, Darth Mike. <laughs> yes, there is a little bit of confusion sometimes in Twitch chat that I see. Uh, it is Darf, D A R F. But Rob called me Dwarf Mike for about the first eight months that he knew me. And I didn't, it, at some point, it switched from him actually not remembering to just him trolling because it's Rob. But I yeah. still don't know where that line was. <laughs> so where, where, is, where does Darf come from? So uh, it's kind of, it's, it's a funny story in, in that it has absolutely no meaning. And I don't know if you can hear that thunder, but it just started storming around here. So apologies if that comes in the background of my mic. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I was in seventh grade, I think. So I must have been like 12, something like that, 13, mm -hmm. whatever age you are in that time. And a friend was introducing me to RuneScape, uh, nice. you know, that, that, that oh. titan of our gaming industry, yes. uh, RuneScape, the, the gateway drug to MMOs. Um, and, uh, and I was making my account, and I was like, what, what should I name myself? And he said, just put Darf in front of your name. No one ever picks it, so you'll always be able to get it. Darf Mike was not taken, and sure enough, in every single platform I've tried to get the name since, Darf Mike is not taken. I don't have to add a one. I don't have to add any numbers, underscores, any of that crap. Darf Mike's available. Uh, so it, it's a very unique name. Mm -hmm. And when when you say it, it does sound unique. You're like Darf. Like I was considering changing it when I started casting to try and get something that was like a little more, I don't know, succinct or like cool, like you know, a, a Moses or a nothing or a you know something that's like. You definitely heard that one, right? Yeah, that, I definitely heard that one. That's close. <laughs> are you are you right. safe? Is your city I, safe? <laughs> I am safe. If my computer suddenly cuts, I'm sorry. Uh, apparently nature hates me. Uh, no, so it's, but then I was, I was thinking about changing it to something that was like a little more punchy or flashy, but at the end of the day, it's true. No one has it ever. No one says, Darf has no other meaning. If you Google Darf Mike, I will come up. Nothing else will come up. I'm actually curious if you Google Darf what comes up. I'm about to do that. Turns out Darf translates to May from German. There so is an, there's an there's an urban dictionary and Darf says the sound of stupidity. <laughs> well, shit. So uh, I don't know if we're, I don't know if we're gonna believe anything that you say from now on because. Uh... <laughs> wow, maybe I should have uh, done a little more research. Example Third one: one someone Man. who farts in the bathwater and attempts to bite the bubbles. <laughs> well. Dude, Bob is effing retarded. Bob Darf Darf. All right, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna leave that alone for now, uh, and I'm just gonna go ahead and say that it has a nice ring to it. Yes. Um, okay. We'll stick. We'll stick with that. So that's that's where my name comes from, Darth okay. Mike. So you are a commentator. We're all we're all through Nerd Street Gamers, of course. Mm -hmm. So you are a commentator mostly with Nerd Street Gamers. So what events have you casted yourself? So I'm relatively new to the scene, as um, I suspect a decent chunk of the audience knows. I um. I just started, I mean, literally the first time I ever did anything with Counter-Strike in, in terms of casting or anything was I, I showed up to Fragadelphia 10 um, because I saw I was between jobs at the time. I was starting a new job like the next week, but I just basically had nothing to do. And I saw the Reddit post uh, that was like, hey, we're having a land in Philadelphia, yada, yada, yada. And there was a footnote in there that was like, oh, so we'll probably do some open caster tries. So if you want to try it, come on down. And I messaged Rob about it, got a little bit more of a response. At least I'm pretty sure it was Rob who posted that. And uh, I said, screw it. I'll go to Philadelphia for a weekend. Went to Philadelphia. I have a lot of friends in the city because I went to school there. So mm -hmm. I crashed on a friend's couch and, and uh, went to uh, Fragtown and cast a couple of games. They threw me on a game. They told me, if you're awful, we'll take you off. If you're not awful, we'll let you keep going for a little while. I cast like two and a half games. Uh, had a lot of words of encouragement. I cast a game with 
MCE. I cast a game with Bach, and I cast a game with Holden. Um, nice. So I that was like my my quick and dirty introduction. And afterwards, I was introduced to a couple of people around like production and whatnot, and they told me, you know, keep in touch. We'll we'll have you back to do stuff. And started showing up to the point fives, and I uh, then did Gexcon with them, and then did uh, did uh, Frag Eleven Summer Championship. And so you so, are all over the place. <laughs> I, I'm all over the nerd street and frag place. Exactly. Uh, more, more on the nerd street side these days. Um, so yeah, so then I started doing events, started showing up for little things, and started casting on my own stream once I figured out how that worked. And uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of taken off in a big way. Okay, so what, what would you say is your, your favorite event? And I know that when you casted at uh, Chicago, I was there, so you got to meet me, and now you're on my show. Uh, you don't have glorious. to pick that one, but... Uh, you, Chicago you was amazing. <laughs> Chicago was incredible. Chicago was the so Chicago was a milestone for me in a lot of ways. Um, both because it's the first time someone flew me out to an event, paid me specifically to show up to that event and cast for them, which mm -hmm. was amazing. Um, it was a city that I wanted to go to for a long time. I'd never been to Chicago. Oddly enough, I'm a Chicago Bears uh, fan in the NFL. That is uh, rough, but okay. <laughs> well, it's getting better. Sun's <laughs> sun's coming up over the horizon. Um, so it was a city I'd wanted to visit for a long time. Admittedly, we weren't really in the city, but, you know, close enough. Proximity. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was an incredible event. Uh, it was really a, a sort of an amazing time with a lot of the Nerd Street crew where we spent, you know, a solid chunk of time together. A lot of people who hadn't really met each other, hadn't really worked together. Um, it was, I got to cast with people. Like, I cast with Magic Helmet, who I'd been doing an online series with. And, you know, I really like Mitch. We cast well together. It was so fun to be able to cast with him on land and just be able to hang out and uh, meet people like that and cast with Topical again, who I love working with. Uh, the whole event was, was fantastic in that respect and in, in the casting respect. Like, I really enjoyed it. Like, the, did the grand finals, did uh, three maps, the grand finals with Whitmer, which was a blast. That guy's always a good time. Yeah, um, I agree. But I also started doing my interviews there, which was uh, really a big step for me and a big, a big milestone, a big achievement, was uh, basically before the event happened, it was, we were maybe two, three weeks out from the event. I sent John a message. John is the CEO of Nerd Street. Mm -hmm. And I said, hey, I've been thinking about trying to do an interview series. What would you think about me doing like quick video interviews at Matt City? And he loved it. He loved the idea. So I threw together, I think I had like 10 of them prepped. And I think I wound up getting four off, four or five off. Yeah. I'm trying to go through in my brain. That sounds about right. <laughs> I, too, I, I, uh, I watched a few. <laughs> yeah. So they, that was they were really good. That was Dark Talks, and that was uh, that was really exciting. And that's sort of the direction I'm I'm kind of headed in now is is a little bit more of the content side of things. I mean, obviously, I'm here bugging you, uh, so uh, so and we're doing the weekly Dark Talk show now, um, and that's really taken off. So it was, I think Chicago was probably my favorite event. I mean, so far, all the big events that I've done have been incredible. I mean, the Summer Championship was, I went from a guy who had cast a few online matches and a couple like local lands. To they threw me on a match that had seventeen thousand people watching. I did the uh, the the steel versus swag match. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Which was I was <laughs> out of my I was out of my element. I think Twitch Chat tore me a fucking new one. Uh, <laughs> like just Twitch Chat was not pleased with me, and I probably deserved it at the time. But it was still it was such an incredible opportunity, and it was you know to work with Scrawny and Topical and Bach and and that whole crowd was was momentous. But I think that. Mad City was where I started to less be along for the ride and more be like I'm doing this and I, I, I want to do this and I want to do this stuff and uh, so it was it was yeah. a big event for me. I'm gonna turn off my air conditioner because I think it's playing in the background. <laughs> yeah, come on, bro. We can hear that. Get that. Get that. Sword. Production value. Yeah. <laughs> Where's the production value? Where's the remote? That question. Also, uh, hello, broccoli in the chat. Uh, I'm burnt because I went to the beach yesterday. And I was in the sun for six hours with, uh, <laughs> with uh, no sunscreen at all. And I burn very easily, as you can tell. My entire body is burnt, by the way. Not just full from this up. I am, I am a lobster to the highest degree. Uh, <laughs> yes, I went outside and look what happened to me, bro. Like, this is, this is what happens uh, when you're pasty white like me. But anyways... Oh. So I don't know where the remote is because uh, oh wait I found it never mind we're good 
<laughs> While I was away on the boat, uh, my landlord sent me a text. I'm moving out of this place soon, and my landlord sent me a text and was like, oh, we're doing an apartment showing uh, this week. So my roommate had to clean my room. So shout nice. out to him. Shout out <laughs> to him. Um, all right. Enough about you. This show's not all about you, Darth, okay? And it's not all about me either, because we got stuff to talk about. So the first thing, can. as we usually do on Drop Room, we talk about the MDL, and we talk about Advanced League going on over at ESEA. We got a couple things to talk about in that. I'm gonna lead it off here. So we got MDL. Swole Patrol, a very popular team in the community. We're talking Freakazoid and his brother. We got the Abadir brothers on the squad. They are struggling right now. They're three and one, which isn't too bad. I know, it sounds misleading. I see your face, mm -hmm. I see the confusion. Mm -hmm. But they looked rough. Against Azio or Azio, or how, however you pronounce that, Azio, Azio, it's all kind of the same. They won that game 16 11. Mm -hmm. it, was looking, it was looking a little iffy for a little bit there. They also lost their first game of the season 16 14, so a very close loss. I'm not going to completely throw them under the bus there. But it's looking a little rough ever since Low Man came into the roster. X Rush, X Pro player, Low Man. So he's come in, and it looks like that we might need to see a little bit more from Swole Patrol right now. Thoughts? So Swole Patrol is an interesting team. I talked to Zelsis two, three weeks ago. Uh, I had him on the Darf Talks, and we, and we were chatting about you know their mentality, their thinking, their going forward, what they're trying to do. Um, I found the, the little man swap a little interesting. A little interesting. Um, <laughs> it was – Ryan was removed, and – I don't know that I inherently agree with it. Ryan's a young player. I think that he was doing quite well for them. I think that there was room for him to improve, but I think that as a young player in the team where you are the youngest, it's sort of to be expected that you're going to have room to improve, if you will. Mm -hmm. The idea of bringing in Lilman as, as an experienced player is interesting because he hasn't played competitively in a while, and he hasn't played seriously in a, in a long time. Um, I think I, I think is saying he's it's been like, I don't know, eight months to a year since he last played a game where he really cared. Yeah. Um, so there's naturally going to be sort of a growth period uh, bringing Lil Man into the team where he sort of refreshes and, and figures it out. The question really to me is how much patience is Swole Patrol going to have for him to, to, to grow back into the role and how much patience do they want to have with him? Um, because, again, you bring in a player like Lil Man, you're not looking to develop a player you're looking to bring in the immediate impact player to try and get you back. Now, yeah, but okay. it's it's questionable whether or not he has that immediate impact. Mm -hmm. Like you said, it's been a long time since he's actually cared. And Ryan, obviously being young, I'm pretty sure he cares a whole lot. I bet getting kicked off of the team didn't exactly feel too good. And don't be confused by Lil Man's ESEA profile. He's not 16 years old. <laughs> no, he's not. He's 28. <laughs> He's 24, according 24. to according to Liquipedia. He is 24 years old, yep. turning 25. He says it too in November. So he's not, he's not quite older. Like he's not older than like E mode, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but like he's much he's significantly older than Ryan is. But I feel like he's hit a skill ceiling, mm. whereas Ryan hasn't yet. He's a known quantity as opposed to an ascending player. Yeah, so the, I think they were thinking short-term rather than long-term with that move. Obviously, even, like, even the core four, like Delsis and Silent, Freak, and Cooper, like, they're all good players. They can do fine any day of the week. But, you know, just maybe the struggles are coming in with the new player. Who knows? I think it's too early to tell because they didn't start playing matches until, like, two weeks ago, right? Yeah. Um, so it's going to take them a while, and they, they you know, solidified that little man uh, fifth. They're figuring out how to play together. This is one thing that was interesting about Swole Patrol last season, and, and just sort of since this iteration of the rosters existed, is they transitioned from being a really puggy team, like a really aim-based, pug, aggressive team, mm -hmm. to a much more thinking team, and then they transitioned sort of out of that. Um, one thing, again, when I, when I spoke to Zelsa that he talked about was that whenever they feel like they're getting stale, they just shuffle all the roles. Mm -hmm. So I think Cooper is calling now. Um, Freak was calling for a while initially. I think that was when they were a really aggressive team. And Zelsus was calling. Uh, and I guess Zelsus felt he was uh, 
I'm trying to remember. It was either Freak was too slow and Celsius was too fast or the other way around. Yeah. And then Cooper's sort of the middle ground for them. But I feel like it's it's a little too early to tell. And again, I mean, I'm looking at this. They 16-6 Squirtle Squad. They 16-3'd Subtle. Azio is not a bad team. That's Maui Snake's team, right? Yeah. And they recently went through a shuffle themselves. So mm. It is surprising to see that um, with NyQuil coming in. Wow, okay. Yeah, that's... There's <laughs> that police was, sirens going off, too. Uh, the world may be ending here in Annapolis, Baldy. I'm not yeah, sure yet. Yeah, it, it sounds like it. <laughs> we're, we're gonna find out, I guess. One way or another. <laughs> okay, so Azio's team, Maui Snakes, uh, he brings in NyQuil from... I believe it was from Maine, or Intermediate, mm-hmm. one, one of the two. Um, so they recently changed their team. Swole Patrol recently changes their team. So maybe it's not too big of a surprise to see that the game is a little bit closer as both teams are kind of working on their own stuff. So things that are new will probably work against a team that's not too familiar with new stuff going on with mm-hmm. that team. So it's kind of open-ended. But I guess we'll, we'll see how it goes for Swole Patrol. They have a, a ton of games coming up. Um, their next game is against the Entourage and then Atmosphere and Blackout. Atmosphere recently lost a player in Vez, and Blackout recently lost a player in J. So we have a ton of teams are changing. So I guess we'll just have to see how they will adapt. But I think the Entourage will finally be a, a wake-up call. For them. Yeah. Yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll be a good one, considering it's the old Ronin roster. So it should still be okay. And they got Crashies now, and they've brought in... Brodo's a new addition for them, right? Is he recently added? I don't know. I think relatively recently. I feel like he was. I, I'm. I've been on a boat. <laughs> I'm. I'm a little out of touch. Um, he I'm joined still on catching up on things. May 29th. So he joined on May 29th. Okay, May so he's, 29th. He's half a month. Um. So not ancient, but not not quite. You know, fresh born. Uh, into the into the roster, if you will. Fresh, yes. The last game that they played was against Gorilla Gang, in which Gorilla Gang won with Ryan, coincidentally topping the team for Gorilla Gang. So there you go. A little bit of full circle for you. So now we're going to talk about the top teams. The teams are actually at the top because Swole Patrol still in the middle. We got Born, we got Dignitas, and we got Freedom Thirty Five. Is this a surprise? Because I find Dignitas no. Yeah, Dignitas, absolutely not. Dignitas <laughs> clearly were at a point where they weren't ready for pro, but especially with the changes they've made and the players they brought in and, and just the composition of that team right now, they are very much ready for MDL. Um, and they're absolutely killing it. I mean, PTR is, Peter is is just, he's, I mean, he's the type of player who should not be in the MDL. Yeah, very true. I'd like... I feel like he's on like the lower end of the professional scene, but he's sure. still a level above the MDL. He's like in that weird what's the term? It's like purgatory. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> absolutely. Your career's almost dead. What? It's like it's like the half step, right? Like you're not quite yeah. ready to climb the mountain, but you're stuck in the valley. You're at the uh, you're at the snack bar below the ski lift. Yes. <laughs> So then we got Freedom 35, and we've got Born Esports. Born is obviously a, a new organization that comes out of nowhere, much like many MDL sponsoring orgs come. Mm-hmm. Um, but Born is probably the most recent one. Well, they're so, gone already. They're gone already? I, th- I saw ZNF. Hold on, I'm going to pull this up. I'm pretty sure ZNF posted a tweet today that this was like their last day playing under Born. Wow. So after a very strong outing already, they're already 6-1. Right? Today um, was our, okay, yeah, literally today, three hours ago. Today is our last day playing Underborn. Hold on, I'm going to link this to our producer. Wow. Uh, bu- 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 <laughs> Put it in there, Griffin. Uh, yeah. Shout outs to Griffin. <laughs> yes, we love you, Griffin. <laughs> uh, today um, is our last day playing Underborn. We are looking for an org to represent in Qualies, MDL, and Lands. We are currently in first place with, an except, uh, with the exception of Dig. Reach, reach, appreciate it. We will be called. So they're back to normal people in Rustin. Normal people at Rusted. I, I like that name. Um, so fun, coincidentally enough, um, <laughs> this will be uh, the last day for Emode before he retires, retires. I've, I've yeah. heard. Yes, retires, retires. This is legit. <laughs> sure. um, so yeah. he, he will be, quote unquote, done playing with really old people. But apparently Born Esports 
will be really done with their roster, or their roster will be done with their org. Don't know where the discrepancy lies within that uh, within the talks of the teams, but they clearly don't want to be uh, represented, or Born doesn't want to represent them. I can't understand why they're already six and one, so they're doing all right. But it's probably all about that cash flow, as it usually is in MDL. And as I do, look at my hands, bro. <laughs> oh my god! Look at that! Very look brilliant. at that line! Is that a, is that a wow? Wow! Yeah, bro. Do you have some aloe vera? I've got some somewhere. I I, I, I need some aloe vera, bro. That is uh, it's go bad. to your local pharmacy, buy a <laughs> tub of aloe vera, and just bathe in it. Just just bathe in it. Sleep Dude, in it. Tonight. I could walk into any store; they'll just give it to me for free. They'll be just like, just get out. It at you. Yeah, you're scaring the customers away. Oh dear God. <laughs> So, Born oh. Esports, they're coming off uh, a loss to Freedom35, who is also at the top. So, the teams that are at the top are only losing to the teams at the top. So, clearly, we have a very kind of set in stone uh, set of teams at the top here. So, Born Esports. However, it is a little bit surprising to me, though. Um, last season, Born Esports was known as just looking for org. They didn't have anybody the mm -hmm. entire season. They mm -hmm. brought in uh, Ian Hardy, a.k.a. Uh, one mod. And uh, the man of the match himself, <laughs> the man of the match, bro. Like, and now they're they're playing out of their minds. And sometimes you just need a little wide swing king in your life. Yeah, but I want to know where it ends because I feel like it is 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 one of them really like the key to this roster. Like from last season, looking for org, they don't play like two out of their minds, and then they bring in. Ian, and now it's all different. Here's here's the thing about a player like, and this is immediately this is sort of, I'm maybe conjecturing a little bit, but here's the thing about a player like like Ian, and I'd be interested to talk to some of his teammates about this, previous teammates as well. Even if it's his individual play in the server that doesn't necessarily bring about a huge change in a team, mm -hmm. he's a hype player. One hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, you you were at Chicago, you watched him play on stage. Yeah, that man gets loud. Yeah. So I, I can see how bringing that kind of chemistry into a team, even if you know his individual fragging or his individual play isn't isn't the the absolute key to finding something, um, can elevate a roster. And I'm looking at their last victory, and he he led the scoreboard. Let's see what he did in that loss. Uh, no, he's about middle in their loss. So nobody yeah. over ten RWS in that game. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little rough, but but yeah, the, the I mean, thing is though, well like like I, I like him. Like I like him as a player, I like him as a person, I think he's a great guy. Mm -hmm. But I think he's also a double edged sword. As somebody who is kind of that hype man, he's also yeah, man. kind of that depression man. Where if things aren't going his way or like individually or as a team, it's like sometimes he doesn't step into like the yo, let's do this, guys. Like we gotta get through this, like like stay pumped up. Like when I saw yeah. him on stage, I did see the emotional Ian come out. I saw the change his Twitter icon, Twitter picture to a just black. Like I saw it. I've seen it happen many times, at least online. Now I got to see it face to face. It's a double edged sword. If you don't have your hype man hyping you up, then it's just bringing everybody down. And it did that at that event. So he does have a bad case of the emo tweets sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> and I, it it all comes out of us sometimes, but more often than not, uh, my boy, my boy Ian gets a little bit of the QQ going on. <laughs> this is my uh, yeah PSA to uh, all young kids watching this, young Counter Strike players. If you put it on Twitter, it's gonna be there forever, um, until you delete it. <laughs> no, someone will have a screenshot. True, that's true. Oh. Everybody has a screenshot. <laughs> Always gonna be out there. Um, but no, I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with venting a little bit on the internet. Uh, yeah, I'm, we all do it sometimes, more or less than others. But yeah, I'm I'm glad I didn't figure out Twitter until after my emotional teenage years. Very <laughs> glad. <laughs> all right, and then the last team that's at the top that we're going to talk about here, unless you really want to delve into uh, bravado, because I hear you got a little spicy uh, info with uh, Sonic coming up. But we will talk about Freedom Thirty Five right now. It's a surprise that they are currently at the top for me after uh, also losing to Bravado, obviously. Mm -hmm. them. Um, but that is their only loss right now. They're 6-1, and one, where they are rocking 4-Shot, John G, Food, Toy, and 10s. Does that surprise you at all? Um, let's see. I've seen 
I think four out of five of this roster on land at various points. Toy and food, I've I've always been impressed by. I mean, they've they've sort of oscillated out. I know food stepped into an admin role for a little while. Uh, mm-hmm. That was food, right? Was that food? I believe so. Was that toy? I they're always playing together, <laughs> so I mix them up all the time. Uh, um, toy was like kind of coaching, kind of playing, kind of mm-hmm. that level. So yeah, I would say it was toy. They're skilled players. They've been in the scene for a long time. Um, they they're. I mean, when you talk about players who have maybe sort of hit a ceiling. It's it's that kind of, of, of realm where we've seen a lot of them. Um, yeah. But they are very capable players. Certainly at this level of play, they're very capable players. John G, um, again, in the vein of um, slightly emotional younger players, but who, when he's on, he is very on. Yeah. Um, has always been the case. He's, he's the type of player who can create space in a server um, just by when he's having a good game, his presence. Yeah. Uh, Tens, uh, who... I most know for nearly getting murdered in the suburbs of Philadelphia at Frag 11 when he tried to walk home at three in the morning. Um, nice. <laughs> no, he's, he's, I mean, he's a very raw skilled player, uh, very mm-hmm. mechanically skilled and, uh, and, and four shot. I'm a little less familiar with, but I've seen him play a, a reasonable amount. And I mean, it's, it's just generally a pretty decently built roster, right? Like it's, mm-hmm. it's a strong roster. It's not too surprising to me. I'm looking at who they've played against recently. Um, they made it through in the minor as well, which is props to them. Uh, yeah. So they're into the into the minor, uh, or the is it the minor or is the minor qualifier? It's the minor closed qualifier, which is technically the minor. Or is it? Or is there a because the minors are now the major now, right? Are we still doing the format where the where they they change the qualifier <laughs> to the major to part of the major? The major is like a two week thing now or a three week thing that they did for last major. I don't know. That it's all me. very confusing. <laughs> yeah. So the the various steps of qualifier, I don't know how players keep track of all the qualifiers that are happening because I I find out about them as they're happening and then start paying attention. But it's <laughs> I mean it is a complicated business to keep track of all the qualifiers for all the events. Um, Very true. Obviously, this is a big one. Yeah, but, and uh, like with Freedom Thirty Five, like the thing that I like the most about mm-hmm. it, you got toy and you got food. Like you said, they've been around a long time. You have that experience. Then you have Foreshot, who's a very capable opper and very capable clutcher, as mm-hmm. we've seen in past seasons with the amount of 1v5s this guy's this guy gets. It's not even fair. But then you have the raw talent of John G and Tens. You have two guys that are experienced that can teach these guys how to be less emotional, especially in John G's case, where he had that kind of like um, huge leaving from Rise and kind of like this huge falling out with the community and all of it, like his huge twit longer and stuff like that. So I'm glad like to see him back, especially in a team that could work as well as they could and do work well. Mm-hmm. So it's a very interesting roster. Absolutely. And it's, I'm just looking at some of the teams they played. Bravado, obviously a big test, and they, they lost that 16-7. 16-9 over Bourne, that's a big victory based on the way that Bourne is playing. Mm-hmm. Um, beat Gorilla Gang in the qualifier, in the, in, the, uh, in the qualifier to the closed qualifier to the closed this, that, and the other thing. Um, <laughs> They beat the Boxer Squad in the Zotac Masters Cup, two zero. Which that's a big head. That's a big scalp to take. That's the former Squice, uh, Splice, Squice, the former Splice <laughs> roster that's playing under Boxer. So that's a that's a pretty big scalp to take. Um, I don't know. This is a this is a team that could go places. This I'm hoping a, they do. Yeah, this is a team that has potential. So, another team that has potential that you are interviewing very soon, Bravado. Yes, I'm going to be sitting down with Sonic. I need to actually check in with him again this week. But I'm going to be sitting down with Sonic this Thursday at 8 p.m. Uh, so, plug there for a Darf Talks. Yes. Uh, where I'm going to be sitting down with the South African opera and uh, talking a little bit about the roster coming to America and what's going on and, and just uh, what that transition's been like. They played, they came up through Maine last season, mm-hmm. um, did fantastically i mean they that, that's another case where a team's just like it's not fair that they're in maine um yeah but you gotta fight through uh yeah. so they're they're interesting because they're a full-time team they're a full-time org they've got org support they've come to yep. the u.s specifically to play counter-strike uh shades of of luminosity yeah very true every once in a while there will be the one org that'll support their team all the way up through the levels of esea and a lot of mm-hmm. times like We'll see organizations come and go because they have no money or something like that. But at least Bravado is like that one team that's like sticking through it. And I feel like that's just because they've invested so much that like, you can't really quit now. And especially with the amount of potential that the team has. 
you just gotta you gotta keep it going. Bravado have made a, as an org have made a long bet uh, that South African esports can stand toe to toe with the world, provided they have an opportunity to. And they've made that bet on this particular roster. And at this point, it's kind of ride or die. You kind of have to just just punch that ticket and uh, and go along for the ride. Give them whatever you can to uh, to support them to make to facilitate what they're doing. And so far, results have been positive. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're qualifying for everything. They're playing very well. Very true. So now, we already kind of we touched on them a little bit here, but I want to I want to delve deeper because uh, they recently uh, uh, came off a sixteen fourteen victory over really old people, and that is Team Dignitas. Now, that scoreline is the closest one that they've had this season. That ha- um, and the closest one that they had before that was sixteen ten. So mm-hmm. this is kind of the first time that Dignitas was really pushed to the edge, and it was against Emode's team. Um, with Alter, Effies, Cardiac, and We Are Legion. So now Emode, after, after that kind of unfortunate loss, he is retiring, but he will retire at the end of today. So I'm kind of hoping that he gets some wins. He faces Levitate and he faces Born. So he's got a little middle tier and a top tier. How, how we think Evan's going to do? I don't know. Last hurrah. I think you might go out with like a 30 bomb in each map, you know, just absolutely shred it. Uh, you know what they say about, it, I mean, we're going to touch on this later, but events with no pressure, uh, where, where there's no expectations on you, really, sometimes you can just go ham. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call it now for Emote. Emote's just going to absolutely wreck the server, full simple them, just obliterate. I'm going, I'm going uh, uh... two 16, 16 9 score lines. Huh. That's no reflection on the team he's playing. I'm just going for the positive, uh, that's a positive storyline here for the exit. That's a that's a really positive storyline. Thirty bombs both maps on twenty five round games. I like both the teams he's playing too. <laughs> I mean, Levitate is is Spermie's roster is the is the old era, what was once era, yeah. um, and Born. I mean, we were just talking about Born, so it, it's it's not an easy task. But it'd be yes. nice to go out with a last hurrah. <laughs> so you heard it here first. Darth Mike thinks Emode's getting 30 bombs on both maps, both 16 9. Uh, you, can, you can clip that for, uh, for future. <laughs> Evan, if it happens, you're buying me a beer the next time I see you. Whoa. Calm All right. Down. So we or got not. a bet on our hands. I mean, it's not a bet he's agreed to, so it's not a very good bet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he will bet on it, okay? I'm, I'm sure Evan's a betting man. He's a gambling boy, so he'll, he'll do it. But Emo will be replaced by a guy that we've seen sparingly over the course of Premier and MBL. His name is mm-hmm. Glorens. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce his name. Um, how do you spell it? G-L-O-R-I-N-S-Z, or Z, for all the Canadians out there. Oh yeah, Glorins. Hmm. So yeah, like he's come and gone in MBL and Premier back when he was playing, when it was known as Premier. Um, so he's been around for quite a while. I think he'll... Eh, it, it's not even like a Lil Man level of experience. He's just been around so long and he's played at this level so long, but he hasn't played for a little bit. So I kind of... summer in MDL? Did he? Uh, adaptation were they in MDL at the time, or were they in? No, because they came up. Maybe he was playing main. He might have been. That's what I'm saying, bro. No, he's he was been, he's been around a long time. Like, and he's usually the sixth man on mm-hmm. most on most rosters, where he just like sits out the entire time. I uh, yeah, I don't know. That's a it's an interesting person to bring in. I mean, emo is a very smart player um obviously i mean he's doing analyst work now he's got a yeah he's got a brain on he's got a head on his shoulders yeah um so it'll be interesting to see how that loss impacts the roster of very old people um yes. uh, I, I think the name is a bit of a giveaway that they maybe didn't have the highest expectations for themselves going into this season yeah <laughs> um, so so maybe they're already pretty happy with the way they're sitting uh yeah. but and Glorens right now, he didn't play at all last season. He played mm-hmm. eight maps of MDL and six maps of Intermediate, and he was playing Intermediate um, 
sorry, he was playing uh, open two seasons in a row with a team called Starbucks. Mm. Um, so he's pretty much been around like every season except 23 and 27. Mm. And uh, I'm hoping that like he's at least been, you know, practicing up. He's only slightly younger than E mode. So maybe we're talking about another skill ceiling that's kind of capped out. Do you think that they, because they name themselves really old people, they're keeping like a median age that they need to be at, like a mean age? <laughs> like, if it drops below 23, we're cutting someone young. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think if they, uh, if, they keep, if they keep this up, they, uh, they're going to have to change their names to really middle-aged. Actually, well, middle-aged middle like is even older now. Are they really? Alter's 19, so he brings the age down. Alter's their okay. young gun. You got Hades who is, uh, has no age listed on HLTV. Good to know. Uh, does he have an age <laughs> listed on ESEA? Uh, everyone else, it, Effie's in Cardiac at 25. You're bringing in Glorens, who's also 25. So, okay. And Hades is 27. Hades is 27. Okay, so we're keeping yeah. that age up there. And By, Effie's age is 100 on ESEA, so he really brings the age up. He's really, he's, <laughs> he's up in your average. Yeah. Up in your average in an aggressive manner. Yeah. Uh, so I think they can hold on to that. I mean, 25 by MDL standards. It's a year older than me, uh, so I'm ancient um, by MDL standards. But, you yes. know, you got to keep that age up. Yeah. All right. So we've talked about the top tier. We've mm-hmm. talked about the really old people right in the middle. <laughs> now we're going to go right to the bottom. No wins yet in the MDL. 46 and 2. The Mexican-American hybrid of sorts. And they have yet to win a game. This is I, uh, 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 yeah. expected. expected. Oof. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying your team doesn't look that great. They came Nor- out open. <laughs> yeah, so basically, like, it's the Mexicans that were with um, Quetzal, or Quetzal, however you pronounce it, um, with Secret Agent and Spader. Mm-hmm. Um, and now they're bringing in American guys like Cobra and Stay Frosty. And they have a new Mexican guy named Gonak, who I'm pretty sure only Mexicans would be familiar with, because it's not, not something I was familiar with. And I usually know most people at this level, and he was a name that I did not recognize. So I think it, that was more of a, like, just purely, hey, we have another Mexican friend. Let's add him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, someone who's available to play these games, someone who's available to play on this ping. What What is their ping, generally speaking? I haven't actually gotten a chance to watch one of their matches yet. Uh, uh, what are they playing with? I mean, it can't be that bad. They play uh, They prefer Texas servers, so it's not like it's going to be too sense. terrible. Yeah. I'd imagine maybe somewhere in like the 80s. Yeah, um, 60, 60. I mean, even to Texas, depending on where they are in Mexico, I guess. 60 yeah. is an unreasonable 50, 60. Mm-hmm. So that's not that um, bad. Yeah, so... And then last but not least, uh, Stellar, a very talented MDL player, is now playing for Hentai Hooligans in Open. You hate to see it. Like, bro. You hate to see it. You I... hate to see the talent just leave again. It's such a bummer. I saw him on LAN uh, at the Nerd Street Showcase LAN, actually. Shout out to Nerd Street Showcase LAN in, uh, in Philly, uh, at the last local host LAN. Uh, he and AGM were playing on a team called Squirtle Squad, of all things. Um, so that's that's a bummer. Uh, that's a bummer. I don't know what the story is behind that. Uh, I might sort of make some inquiries and see if there's a little bit more to the to the table. His tweet was not having fun anymore. Um, so I guess the motivation wasn't there for him. It just whatever happened, the joy of the game went out for him, and he decided to screw it. I'm out. But that it just doesn't make sense to me. Like if you, like if you play at such a high level, you'd think that you want to play against other teams at that same level. But just going down to open and then just smacking kids, like where is like any sort of progress or any sort of like fulfillment from doing that? It's such a bummer too, because I mean they made playoffs last season. Yeah, you know they made playoffs last season as uh, as as Iceberg who weren't Berg, not Berg. Um. They even, Iceberg, not Berg. Yeah, they even went to the to the round of, of four on playoffs. So they won their first playoff match. And like they didn't make it to land, but still, you're yeah. right, you're right knocking at the door of making land. They had two chances to make the land to make to to have a shot at relegation, have a shot at pro league. How do you go from that to saying, I just don't want to play anymore? 
Yeah. Uh, it, it's just like, it, it's kind of like a slap in the face to his teammates too, because somebody of that talent, like now you got to try to replace that. And I don't think they're going to match it unless they get somebody like PTR, with, like from Dignitas, like somebody who bridges the gap between MDL level play and pro play. So finding somebody in that middle ground, I I think is going to be really difficult. Well, you know, they're bringing in the legend right now, stepping out of the out of the coaching chair and into the player seat. You've got the <laughs> absolute legend, AGM, Michael Abood. Yeah. Full, full, full fragging master. Hey, G, I, I love you, buddy. You guys got to find somebody quick, though. <laughs> you guys so pessimistic. Find I'm sorry. Like, it's not going to work. He top like, fragged against an MDL jammers. No, no. He no, was plus 10 on no, the kill. 22 no, and 12. No. 1.51 rating. No. No, you're not a believer, AGM. I'm, I'm not a believer. I'm not a believer, bro. You I appreciate you, AGM. Uh, I appreciate you too. When you're coaching, no, it is interesting too because uh, I, Mike had made. It, I mean, I, I again to uh, to AGM. He was the first of the Darth talks that I did on Twitch, uh, the live ones. Um, so I spoke to him about the transition to the coaching role, what he thinks about the coaching role, things like that. I would be surprised if he's doing this willingly. Um, in terms of coming back as a player, I think that he's been adapting to the coaching role and growing into it, and I think that it it, it is a good fit for him. Um, I think there's he'd be the first to admit that there's like room to grow and continue to learn uh, as a coach, and he's he's definitely working on that. But it's it sounds weird to say, but it's kind of a distraction to yeah. be back as a player, if you will. For yeah, because team. it's not. It's not the same environment that you'd be in as a coach, whereas mm -hmm. like you need to focus so much more on like playing rather than just thinking. Now you got to do both. Yeah, it's so. good. It's good that they have him there to step in, right? Yeah, I I think so. But I think that's the case with any coach, and I think especially mostly in the pro scene. I think less so with Zeus. But I think we've seen it with many pro teams as well that like when your coach steps in, it's usually not going to go that well. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you've ever seen Envious or I guess old Envious when they oh, used to God. play with, with Next. That yeah. was an abomination. We're talking like three frags max at the end of the game. Like That was it, when it, RPK went down, right? I think so, yeah. Where he stepped in. I mean, that was just <laughs> a terrible situation. He had no no expectation of doing anything in that. But it is... Yeah. It's aggressive. It's, like, it's yeah. like when Pitta was on CLG. That was also terrible. It was, it was not a good look. Yeah. <laughs> not a good look. Coaches moving into the player role is usually not that great of, a, of an idea. It's so, a shame, too, because I really like this roster. Yeah, for sure. But then they just got to do that. You got to lose who, a star player, too. Stellar was... Hey, maybe AGM will just become the star of the team. You, you never know. I'm buying stocks. I'm buying <laughs> stocks in this narrative. I like this narrative. The return to prominence for AGM. All Holy right. Back. So we're going to move on. We've done MDL. Now we got to do advanced. We're moving down. The new, the new division in ESEA. And we still got Team 1. The Brazilians are still undefeated to this day. They're sitting pretty at 8 and 0. They just came off victories beating Big Frames. That's Nerf's, Nerf's team. Um, and they also uh, defeated the other undefeated team, Glaucoma. So now they are sitting at 6-1. and one. Their next games are against two more top five teams. You got Pug Life and you got Mentality. I really hope that Team 1 gets knocked down a little bit. Like, not a lot. I hope they at least go, like, 1-1 one, one here. And preferably Pug Life wins. Because I don't know how much you're focusing on the advanced league, uh, Dark One. But Team 1 is the Brazilian team that went to WESG and played fairly well. I'm sure you're sure. familiar with them. Sure, yes. Um, and Pug Life was actually a team that went to uh, Chicago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had, yeah. So they're playing quite well. They actually had strings um, for a game or two when, uh, when he got booted off his team. But, now that, but then he had to go to another team. So, you know, what do you do there? But Pug Life is sitting at the top as well. They're number three. They're six and one. Mentality is at number four. They're also six and one. I really hope 
that Dame Joris will pop off against Team One <laughs> and show crazy? and show a little bit of a little bit of pizzazz. Yeah, I uh, I could see it happening. Pug Life is is every time I see Pug Life, particularly when I see Pug Life on land, they're a better team than I thought they were. I took notice of this team um, not just at at the actual Chicago Land, but they competed in the online tournament, and they were I think our runner up. Uh, they 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 took second place in a tournament, which you know maybe a lot of teams didn't take it too seriously, but there were some real teams there. There were some pretty serious teams there. Yeah. Um, so Pug Life did significantly better than I expected to, them to in that online tournament. And then they really did bring a lot of that play to LAN. I was, I was impressed by that squad. Um, so I would not be surprised to see Pug Life be able to knock that team off. And then Mentality Esports, the player I'm most familiar with that on, uh, with, on that team is, uh, is Droid. Um, yes. I've seen Droid play a few times. I do like Droid. Let me see what, uh, who else is on that roster right now. Before, before Advanced came into play, Droid was kind of like one of those like mainstays of main. Main mm-hmm. stays of main, um, where he would always play at like a, a decently high level. So I'm kind of glad that uh, that he's continuing that six and one currently in advance. So he's playing pretty well. Um, they also have a guy named KMZ. KMZ's on, legit on, on that team. And last week his stats were astronomical, like stupidly amazing stats. So he was definitely carrying this team as well as right and even right now like his stats are pretty impressive. He rocks over 101 ADR across 129 rounds. He's rocking a 15.66 RWS after 129 rounds and he hasn't actually played a lot of rounds. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, a lot like a lot of the teams and players are at about one a 190 to 200 right now. So he's not quite getting up there and I think that's just because he hasn't been playing with the team recently, which is very unfortunate considering how good he is. So KMZ and Droid definitely carrying the squad. Pug Life, Dane Joris, and Crux is actually really good as well. Good Canadian lad, such as myself. So always got to support that. So out of mentality and Pug Life, who do you think might be able to get a win on Team 1? I think it's possible that either of them do. I mean, obviously both are coming into it as underdogs, but um, especially with online CS, at, at, at the end of the day, it's kind of if someone's feeling it, if, if it's somebody's day, if somebody's just having a game out of their mind, if a squad's having a game out of their mind, you never know. Now, Team 1 admittedly has the advantage of a, a whole lot more, more support, more org support, more stability, more dedication to the game, just in, in terms of being a defined, definite team that has rosters that sign player and cut players and that kind of a thing. Yeah. Um, so they are the heavy favorites in any match that they're having at this level. But this is, again, a team that probably really shouldn't be in main at this point, or advanced. Uh, that yeah. really should be competing with the likes of the Mountain Dew League um, in terms of just the support that they that they have. Uh, but it's online CS, you know? So I'm going to call yeah. it for... <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm going to call it for mentality. Mentality pick. Ooh. KMZ was actually... So here's my baseless bit of conjecture, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw out... I'm going to start a rumor. I'm going to start a spicy rumor okay. here. Okay. We were talking about Squirtle Squad and the yeah. empty spot. Keep an eye on KMZ, because KMZ Ooh. played the Philly land with AGM and Stellar, uh, so they've played together. So I don't know what the verdict was on how they enjoyed playing together, but he's a very talented guy. He's an ascending player, and uh, I don't know. Maybe if they were impressed with him at, uh, or if AGM was impressed with him at at Philly, maybe that's a an eye to watch, a, a name to watch rather. Very true. Somebody clipped that. Clip that. We started a rumor. We need it at the top of Reddit right now. So clip that and get it going. <laughs> so everybody's favorite advanced team. We're moving on from those top boys because we got to go down to the bottom of the barrel. Everybody's favorite advanced team, CLG Red. They have made a change, not at player, but at coach. Vez is stepping down from MDL, and he's coming down to fix the female fire that is CLG Red. Uh, they started off 2-1, so everybody was like, all right, CLG Red could be legit. Now they're 2-5 and five because they just continue to lose. Not very close games either. <laughs> Their closest game was against Hysteria, who's a top 10 team at least, mm-hmm. but um, they did not win. So <laughs> they lost in overtime, in which they didn't win a round in overtime, which I think is poetic. 
do you think Vez will bring anything to the table here? I I don't know that he does. I don't I don't know any coach that can come in. To, it, it's not like a football team, right? Like mm-hmm. it's not like a coach is just going to come in and change a franchise. Like it's it's not going to happen. I I think Vez is just it's all about that cash. I think that if they avoid relegation, it's a victory for them, right? I think it, that was I think, them every season in Maine. <laughs> well, yeah, that was them every season in Maine. Well, now it's them every season in advance. But <laughs> for the amount of shit that they took for getting put into advanced and the amount of like chaos that that spawned on the internet, uh, I think that the, the objective for this season is literally is just stabilize. Stabilize, keep the position in advance, show that you're at least in the middle, right? Yeah. Um, they've got matches with such esteemed rosters as the Hentai Weeaboo Master World coming up. Um, <laughs> recently of mdl yes game. <laughs> and so. honestly like i don't even know if they win that game like as much of a of a joke roster as their name is as their players are slash did play in mdl like i'm not even saying his name i love the name but i'm not saying it again i said it too many times in my life already what um you know who i'm talking about <laughs> do i look at the roster you know who i'm talking about um so... i definitely don't know Yes, yes, you do. I'm not saying it. Um, all right, so the Hentai Weeboo Master List, HWML. I mean, this is a roster that took a map off of NTC. That, yeah, that just doesn't make sense. I cast that game. It was hilarious. <laughs> they were, like, the first ones to do it, too. Because then every team figured out, oh, you just a ping, and you can beat this team because their ping is atrocious. Yeah. But Hentai Weeboo Master Lords were one of the first to figure it out. Uh, which was a which was a giggle and a half. So I don't know. It's a pretty esteemed roster, pretty pretty legit squad. Esteemed, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. legit. Yes. Mm-hmm. HWML. All right. So Vez, I don't think he gets. I don't think he gets CLG red on track. I don't think he outfoxes the uh, hentai weeaboo master lords. Um, I think they will use their hentai powers and just. Tentacle strangle CLG Red. Oh, God. <laughs> and then the last thing, this is actually more so in just ESEA news in general. They are instituting a blog for no purpose. Like, their front page yeah. doesn't... that they, they don't need this. It looks prettier than their front page. Their front page is... I, it, I, I mean, ESEA does wonderful things. I don't know that they have the best website in the world. They don't. It's yeah. it's it's a mess. I I know Topical has been. Uh, <laughs> he said like, man, I wish it was fast. <laughs> like sometimes it's a little slow. I I'll admit that. <laughs> and now they institute this new blog, and it's just like, why? Why don't you just put all of your stuff on the front page in its little box? I don't know. Yeah, it'll be interesting. We'll see. They're trying to... ESEA is putting a lot of work into trying to change their optics. They have, at this point, a, a lot of negative rep with a lot of people. Um, yeah. Some of it deserved. A lot of it sort of irrational. Um, I would say a lot of it irrational, but, you know, what have you there. Um, so yeah. they're, trying to, they're trying to freshen up the look a little bit, pretty it up, change things, change the way they, they represent and interact with their community. I mean, they brought on Bach as a community manager fairly recently. They had yeah. Bach, but they gave him another hat. Um, man has a lot of hats at this point. <laughs> Possibly too many. <laughs> it's a I'm lot sure of hats. He's, he's just like, bro, I wish I had less hats. I don't know. <laughs> All right. We got about like 10 minutes left. So we're going to try to bust Oh, jeez. Yeah, I know. We've been we've been going right here. We're we've just, been rambling. Yeah, exactly. So we're gonna talk about how I'm not gonna pronounce this correctly whatsoever. So if you want to correct me, you could go for it. But That's Bello right. Horizonte is how like, I'm gonna say it. It's like Bello Horizon, Horizon, Horizonte. Bello Horizonte. I don't know. I, I, I uh, watched a <laughs> YouTube video before this started trying to learn how to pronounce it. So I got nothing. I'll go with Horizonte. <laughs> I'm glad that video did not educate you. I um, forgot already. It didn't take long. So it did not take grand, long. In the grand finals of this event, we had FaZe and we had Mouse Sports, which doesn't sound like anything crazy. It's not doesn't sound like it should be unexpected. But FaZe was playing with Norwegian Croman, and Mouse Sports was playing with good old American boy nothing. In the grand finals, 
in a best of five, and it went to all five maps. That is ridiculous. <laughs> it was a great finals, too. Like, it wasn't even like, sometimes you watch these finals, and you're like, eh, the best Counter-Strike is behind us in this tournament. But no, that was a... Because I, 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 you know, I was flying back uh, yesterday, and I got home, and I, I watched, I think, like three maps of it, and it was, it was pretty legit. Which is insane to me, but it, it doesn't surprise me that FaZe came out with the win. I'm just surprised it took FaZe this long. Mm-hmm. It took them all five maps with Chroman, and I think, objectively, Chroman is a better player than nothing. I think Chroman, obviously, is playing um, more professionally mm-hmm. within the past six, eight months than nothing has, especially since he's playing in, uh, in open right now, so it's not like he's playing at the highest level of competition. Chroman's been standing in for a lot of teams, so obviously, now that he's standing in for phase, this isn't anything new for him to just come in and, and play for a new team for a little bit, for a tournament. But I just think it's insane that they actually managed to get to the finals. Like nothing versus Croman in the front in the finals. That doesn't make any sense. Like it's that, hard to that headline. That yeah. headline. <laughs> it's it's wild. It's a wild world we live in. But it it kind of harkens in a in a weird little way to one of the things we were touching on earlier, which is the ascending at talent versus the sort of leveled off plateaued descending talent, if you will. Nothing is at a much later point in his career than Croman is. So it's kind of interesting to have those two as different kinds of stand-ins. Chroman is a, is a player who's really his stock is up and up and up. I mean, this is going to skyrocket him. If he doesn't stick around with FaZe for a while, man's mm-hmm. going to be getting offers. Uh, sure. man, man won a 1v2 with no ammo. I mean, <laughs> it's wild. <I'm>... Uh, <laughs> nothing, uh, nothing is, I mean, apparently nothing just owns Brazil. Because uh, the last time he was there for a tournament, they won it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and then he's been an analyst slash streamer for a year. And he comes yeah. back and he makes a grand final, which is uh, I don't even know if that's poetic. That's like story. Like that's that's a fairy tale story right there. My one of my questions, question that I'm going to pose to you is: Does this say something about these rosters in terms of their skill to be able to play with stand in at that level, or does it say something about every other roster? that was at that team and that is in the scene right now, that they're playing sloppy enough Counter-Strike or they're playing not disciplined enough Counter-Strike that with their full five, they couldn't topple two teams with stand-ins? Uh, I think it's a little bit of both. I'll be fair. Now Sports and FaZe are both amazing teams. Oh, yeah. Um, but like when, when you look at like the team that used to be on top, undisputed, no question about it, SK. They bring in Stewie, and they aren't great. Like, against SK, nothing popped off. Like, he made them look silly. And it makes you question, like, should they really have given up their other Brazilian to bring in Stewie? I, don't, I, I didn't like the change right at the start. And even now, after they've lost all these times, I still don't like it. I think that the thing about SK... That I've always thought is is their best their best aspect, despite having you know some of the greatest players in the world. Their best aspect was always their team play. It was always the way they played as a unit. Even when Cold yeah. was the best player in the world, like no dispute, the reason he was the, allowed to be the best player in the world was the way that team played. Yeah, and so I think they're very much still figuring out how to integrate Stewie into the lineup and to have that communication come back. Um, and I, I think that that causes trouble. Yeah, it's uh, it's unfortunate, but I think it really is a, an example of just how the landscape is right now. And mm-hmm. just how, like, these two teams are so good that they can play with a stand-in and go to a full five-map series. Like, I, it's just an example of how... It's incredible, yeah. How kind of... I don't want to say bad the rest of the teams are, but they're just not at the level that they used to be, that they can just compete against that. Yeah, strategy and team play are less in focus, I would say. Yeah. It's, it's a lot more raw skill aim, um, and it's interesting that a lot of the tactical aspects uh, have sort of dropped off. Uh, yes. I, know, I know some analysts have been talking about or have been posting about and talking about how the constant saturation of tournament schedules doesn't allow as much time for practice, which by nature degrades the amount of strategic planning you can do. Yeah. Uh, so I think it'll be interesting to see if that trend continues or if it sort of starts to swing back in the pendulum. So we'll see if we're going to see a ton of individual play or strategies when we uh, move on to Fragadelphia. It's coming up soon in August, but we have the Summer Sizzle coming up very soon. 
Um, and uh, me and Topical touched on this a little bit last week. Um, but it's coming up. We got $1,750 for the first place winners of the Summer Sizzle. $1,000 for second place and $500 uh, for third place. So signups are live. Um, you can go to fragadelphia.com. Literally the only thing on that right now is CSGO sign up and Battalion sign up. So, I mean, if you want to play Battalion 1944, I'm looking at you, Lex. <laughs> then uh, then you are good to go. Um, it is a partnership with Pregame. They have their Pregame is mostly known for their uh, their Face It Hub that they have right now, much like Dust2 and Mythic have their uh, Face It Hubs. Pregame also has their Face It Hub. Uh, it is being which is co-owned by Maestro, who also plays for uh, Fam143, their academy team. Fam143, the uh, the team in MDL. They also have an academy team in which Maestro Mike is uh, also a part of. And as you can see on your screen right now, we have the Fragadelphia Online uh, picture right there. So you can contribute uh, to the prize pool if you wish to. All you have to do is do a bunch of like, follow this account, follow that, follow this, do whatever. You know, you Help do them that. out. Yeah. <laughs> Help a brother out. <laughs> you, you follow DreamHack, you can contribute 20 cents to the Summer Sizzle. I think that's a, pre that's a pretty good deal right there. That'll help out significantly. And if you want to volunteer, you can volunteer. They need observers, admins, casters, and content creators, of which me and Darf are both content creators, and we could very much volunteer if we wish to. Sounds like a decent time. <laughs> if, if you're up for it, Mikey boy. I might find <laughs> myself that way. I'm not sure yet. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I might be there. Might be there with a microphone and camera sticking it in people's faces. We'll see. <laughs> hey, I'm Darf. Want to do Darf talks? I'm talking to you. Like, just get right in their face about it. <laughs> it's pretty much how we do it. We just actually kidnap people. They wake up in a room in a 10-minute interview, and then they wake up back in their computer chair. <laughs> it's, you know, it's a strange procedure. Very true. And you can also contribute on Naturino if you want to... Uh, crowdfund whatsoever for Fragadelphia. They're looking for $3,200. That is their goal. Um, so you can contribute in a bevy of ways. Once again, by following uh, various Twitter accounts, you can just follow and you could contribute 25 cents. If you visit dreamhack.com, you get five cents. All you have to do is go to, to you click once, boom, a nickel for the entire event. And I'm very jealous of whatever team gets that nickel is very rich. Yeah, I wish I got a nickel every time I open a web page. I would be wealthy beyond yeah, imagination. Exactly. The amount of the amount of tabs that I've had open on ESEA before mm -hmm. when I was doing my old podcast and when I was doing my fantasy league, oh my god. I'd just be rolling in nickels all day, bro. Shout outs to the fantasy league. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> league the, champ. Yeah. <laughs> I I don't even think I won my league. So sad. <laughs> um commission never wins. Yeah, exactly. Just look at Roger Goodell. Um, so right now we actually have four teams that are already uh, committed for Fragadelphia. So if you want to do the Summer Sizzle, you can go in for that. But these four teams are skipping the Sizzle. They're going right in. We got Grizzlies, um, which I assume is probably like the main team or the yeah, or the advanced team. Uh, Grizzlies. Swole Patrol is already on the, uh, the list. So I wonder if they're actually going to go with their core five or if it'll be a bit of a mix with the Abadir brothers. Um, there's a team called Arania, who I'm not familiar with, and I don't know if you've ever heard that name before. Arania? A little bit. All right. So they are the new pug life. They're about to come out of nowhere. And then we got Penn State. So <laughs> we got Penn State. <laughs> That's what Anyone I'm saying. Know? They are representing their university Damn. at Fragadelphia. So uh, <laughs> good for I them. College I hope it's the future. Yeah, I hope they uh, do something. <laughs> because... Uh, Maybe this will put college esports a little bit more on the map in, in CS. So, I mean, we do have the AVGL. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's coming up. I think it's a natural, a natural area of growth. Sure. Uh, I, think, I think it's going to happen. So, it's always interesting to see those college teams come out and to see what the level is uh, and sort of measure it against teams like, I mean, obviously, that out of those four, the measuring stick is Swole Patrol, right? Even yeah, if it's a sure. mix, even if it's not that full roster those players are cut above a lot of what you're going to see in, in sort of open tournaments. And it's, it's a great opportunity for players to really see how they stack up. And that's the beauty of these open tournaments is anyone can go. So no matter what level you're playing at right now, go see if you can play against, you know, a player who's been in majors, see if you can yeah. stack up there. And uh, it's, it's always an interesting time. All right. Well, Darth, it's that time. It's the, uh, it's the time to call it a day.
my first drop. Yes, room. your first Hopefully drop room. Yes, we. I'm sure that uh, I will bring you back as my co-host because we're not going to learn all this info about you and then just kick you to the curb. We won't do that to you. It'd be very rude. Keep me around. I got to keep you around, but not an obligation. It's not an obligation. But I like you. You're a, you're a good there, lad. There's a gun off camera. You just can't yeah, see it. Exactly. Leave, exactly. Folks. There's an AR-15 pointed right at your head. I hear you guys got a lot of those over in America. I wouldn't know anything about it. Never. Never. <laughs> Guns in America? God forbid. <laughs> I don't have any up here in Canada, so we're in the we're in the safe land. Your hands are full with all that health care. Yeah. <laughs> My hands need are full. Right right now. Now. Bro, you need some right now. I need, right I need now. health care, and good thing it's free. <laughs> All right, but enough of the political commentary. <laughs> that is all for us at Drop Room with my new my, my new host, Darth Mike. I hope you had fun. <laughs> I had I had a blast. Happy to be here. Hopefully, I will be uh, back many more times. Yeah. Thank you all for having me, and uh, good night, everybody. <laughs> oh yeah, and uh, we won't forget to plug Darth Talks because he's coming back with Sonic from Bravado. So don't forget to Thursday eight p.m. Thursday eight p.m. 8 p.m. 8 p.m. Okay. on Thursday. 8 p.m. So if you fall asleep at 7.30, don't, because Shame you will you. miss it. Yeah, you're, we don't want no old people, but we do, you know, like going to bed early. Yeah. Just just watch them. Just, it'll be Come good. Go to the talks. Get a, get yeah. insight into the new kid on the block. Yeah. He just moved here. He's a foreign exchange student. We're going to find <laughs> out what's going on with him. Very true. That is all for us. Goodbye and good night. <laughs>